A senior police official says a joint investigations team has been tasked with investigating the shooting of four Indonesian Army soldiers during a clash with police in Batam Island over the weekend. It was the latest sign of strains between the rival security forces. Both the police and the military have engaged in sporadic turf wars since the institutions were split apart in 1999. This latest clash came as members of the National Police's Mobile Brigade attempted to raid a warehouse containing illegally stockpiled subsidized fuel. During the raid, at least four members of the local Army Battalion 134 allegedly arrived on the scene and attempted to disrupt the police action. A scuffle ensued and four soldiers were shot during the fray. The National Police say they will punish any officers found to have violated official procedures during the brawl. Lawmakers in Aceh ignited controversy this week with plans to extend strict Sharia law to non-Muslims living in this staunchly conservative province. A new bylaw passed by the local legislative council effectively outlaws, among other things, the purchase, consumption, and possession of alcoholic beverages, homosexuality, in close contact between unmarried couples. Those found in violation of Islamic law will be subjected to hefty fines, prison time, or lashes with a rattan cane. Interfaith activists say the expanded Sharia law will affect more than 90,000 non-Muslims living in the semi-autonomous province. And it's that distinction of Aceh as a semi-autonomous region that is allowing this to happen. No other province in Indonesia follows two criminal justice codes or is allowed to practice a form of Sharia law. Still, Islamic officials say, spreading Islamic law to non-Muslims is not a form of discrimination. They argue that Indonesia is still a pluralistic country, that locals will still be allowed to practice their own religions, but explain that everybody will have to follow the same set of rules. But the simple fact that this set of rules stems from a single holy text has angered interfaith activists. This bylaw has drawn a lot of controversy and it's sparked public outcry, especially from the interfaith activists who think that uh, this is going to affect at least 90,000 uh, non-Muslim living in Aceh, which are not supposed to be affected by the bylaws because they're not Muslims. For some, the expansion of Sharia law is just another example of mission creep by Aceh's local leaders. Islamic law has spread in recent years as a sort of backlash to modernism. Skinny jeans, punk rock, and even dancing have attracted the ire of the Sharia police. These instances were able to slide by despite serious condemnation in the media. But these more recent moves to expand the reach of Islamic law beyond Muslims may have gone too far. Activists are now calling for a constitutional court review of the bylaw in a push that may force Jakarta to say just how autonomous Aceh actually is. The National Disaster Mitigation Agency, BNPB, is working with the Indonesian Air Force to seed the clouds above South Sumatra in an effort to douse the region's spreading brush fires with rain. The fires have burned outside the provincial capital of Palembang for more than a month causing widespread respiratory illness and shutting down flights at the city's airport. Air Force planes will fly into the clouds above South Sumatra this Friday, dumping salt as they pass through moisture-rich clouds. More than 30 hotspots are currently burning across Sumatra, many of them smoldering in carbon-rich peatland. But two days of heavy rains have snuffed out the fires in Riau province, allowing the residents of Pekinbaru some semblance of clean skies before the haze from nearby South Sumatra returned. Indonesia has promised to remain firm on farmers and companies caught practicing illegal slash-and-burn land clearing, but the brush fires still remain an annual concern. Jakarta's outspoken deputy governor, Basuki Cahaya Purnama, dismissed criticism by the violent hardline group, the Islamic Defenders Front, over the appointment of a Chinese Christian to one of the nation's highest offices on Monday, saying he was accustomed to such resistance. 
Basuki shrugged off the criticism of the FPI, adding that if the hardline Islamists rejected his appointment as governor, then he had no problem simply rejecting them. Basuki will step into the role of governor of Jakarta this October, as current governor Joko Widodo moves on to become the nation's president. The appointment is a historic move for Indonesia, as the world's largest Muslim-majority country looks to a minority within a minority, both a Chinese and a Christian governor, to helm the capital. Still, the FPI plans to stage a protest in Jakarta over Basuki's new role, after hardline leaders called the deputy governor an arrogant non-Muslim. But the unflappable Basuki responded by saying they were free to protest, yet he warned that the police will be keeping a close eye on their activities. If the FPI steps out of line during this demonstration, Basuki warned that local police will have no mercy.